The DEC released its recommendations for opening about 85% of the Marcellus Shale to hydraulic fracturing. As advocates and opponents of hydrofracking, as it's known, continue to comb through this 700-plus page document, we're actually finding that there are just as many questions as there are answers when it comes to how this report will be impacting the future of the industry. Joining us now to talk more about the report is Dennis Holbrook. He is on the board of directors of the Independent Oil and Gas Association of New York. Mr. Holbrook, thanks for your time. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. So, uh, you know, here's what we've heard from, uh, we've heard from now the spectrum of folks. Folks on the industry side say too much regulation is actually going to curtail this industry. Folks on the green side, if you will, the extreme green side say you can't regulate it enough. The governor calls this approach balanced. Do you believe that this approach that we see DEC taking is in fact balanced? Well, I do have to comment at the outset that we also consider ourselves to be the green fossil fuel. So uh, uh, we hopefully identify somewhat with the, with the green elements as well. Okay. As far as the question of balance, uh, I would say this. The uh, report is extremely comprehensive. I think the intent is to anticipate anything that possibly uh, needs to be addressed. Uh, I believe it also is probably overly conservative in terms of uh, some of the provisions. I think they are a reaction to uh, concerns that have been expressed out there in the public arena. Hmm. Uh, so do I believe it is balanced? I think it, it probably is balanced a bit more toward the conservative side at this point in time. But I do believe it's an encouraging document in the sense that it's finally allowing, hopefully, the industry to move forward. Interesting. Uh, conservative, can you be a little bit more specific? In what areas? Well, for example, historically, we've been allowed to drill on state lands. Right. Uh, there's a provision in there, as I understand it right now. And again, we're working from an executive summary. Uh, I have not had the opportunity to go through the 700-page-plus document as of yet, but I surely intend to. But uh, there's a provision in there that, that restricts access now, surface rights to state lands. Correct. Uh, I find that uh, disappointing in the sense that we've had a long history of safely developing and uh, engaging in oil and gas exploration on state lands. So I think the, the taxpayers of this state are deprived of a significant opportunity to reduce our tax burdens. Yeah, we should actually state for viewers, and I, I know we've talked about this before, but I just want to reiterate, there is hydraulic fracturing going on in New York right now, correct? That is correct. It has been going on since 1949. But we are talking about vertical versus horizontal. Is that, is that the difference? We are talking about larger volumes. Uh, principally. Uh, the activities that many people have heard about in Pennsylvania involve larger volumes, pr primarily of, of uh, water and sand and, and some chemicals, but primarily it's simply larger volumes. It's not whether you're drilling wells vertically versus horizontally because we also are drilling wells at present in New York State horizontally. Hmm, interesting. Okay. So in terms of the uh, requirement that any chemicals that are used would be uh, required to be disclosed. Is that something that you believe the industry can, can get on board with? Because at the federal level, there's been a fight over that. I have no issue, and I don't believe our industry. Uh, I should point out that I'm not only a member of the Board of Directors of Ioga of New York, but I'm also Executive Vice President of Norse Exploration, excuse me, Norse Energy, which is an exploration company in New York State. So if that helps you. Uh, we are presently engaged in, in drilling in New York. We have no issue at all associated with identification of uh, the composition of, of fracking fluids. Hmm. The if, in fact, the, the governor was to say, okay, we would open drilling, state land for drilling um, going forward, then how much more of the Marcellus would be available to the industry? Well, I haven't quantified it, but I can tell you that where our principal acreage is located in central New York, in, in particular in Shenango County, uh, there's a significant portion of state land that abuts our acreage position. So uh, all I can suggest to you is uh, there is an opportunity to safely develop those properties and to provide the benefits uh, to, the, to the populace of New York State. And I think our neighboring Pennsylvania has an appreciation for just what you can contribute economically uh, along the way. And so I just would suggest that that would be something 
Uh, if, if New York isn't ready at the present time, I'm hopeful that as they become more comfortable with this process, that some of these opportunities will open up. But when we talk about state-owned land, for me, at any rate, that conjures up things like the Adirondack Wilderness. Uh, that's, is that not what we're talking about here? We're not talking about state parks, right? The, the state owns a lot of land. <laughs> right. And right. what we're talking about is, and, and something to be kept in mind is, we pride ourselves as an industry, and my company in particular, with what the location looks like within a few months after we've been in there drilling. Remember that the drilling process itself is a matter of a few weeks. Uh, you then have a, uh, basically a process to go back and, and bring the land as much as possible back to its original condition. Very often, all you're looking at after the well drilling process has ended is a three foot high wellhead and perhaps some residual uh, facility that may be designed to collect fluids. But it's relatively benign and as I often point out, uh, it's much less notice, notice, noticeable out there in the environment than, for example, a windmill would be. Do you believe that the industry has learned sufficiently from the experience in Pennsylvania, which, which you've just brought up, obviously, and which is something that, that people who are opponents of hydrofracking point to and say, well, look at the mistakes in Pennsylvania. Has the industry learned sufficiently to make sure that those mistakes are not recurring here in New York? Well, I would like to believe that we're always going to learn from experience. I think it's important to point out the distinctions that exist in New York. We've had a regulatory scheme here that is second to none in terms of the oversight that is exercised over the industry. And as a result, when you hear about concerns expressed, they're typically not concerns expressed with drilling activities in New York. They're somewhere else. So I think you have to give credit where it's due. Our uh, Department of Environmental Conservation has done an excellent job of regulating the industry, and I think the SGAS is just a further example of their determination to make sure that they're going to safeguard each aspect of this process. Mr. Holbrook, for the, from the industry's perspective, how much regulation would be too much? In other words, where is that line that you draw where it no longer becomes profitable for you and for other firms like yours to even bother doing business in New York? Let me give you an example. Uh, one of the things about New York that is very efficient is that we have a scheme that is developed through the uh, regulatory process where the DEC acts as the lead agency it basically takes in the permitting process, it reviews all the various considerations involved, and it passes the final determination as to whether your well plan uh, is appropriate, and then they go out and they inspect the drilling process as it takes place. Right. That's a very efficient process. There are some suggestions now, as I read the, the current proposed SGIS, that are suggesting the return of more control and decision making to the local communities. While I understand the appeal, you can appreciate also the challenge that, that could create with inconsistent uh, oversight in zoning rules that might vary between one township and the next that may be adjoining as far as where the lo well location is. So there is an advantage to having a consolidation of that process. There's nothing wrong with getting input from local concerns. We work with local communities on issues such as the use of their roads, and we work out agreements with those local communities. But you do need some centralization of the process. And so if it became too much diverse, uh, you would create, I think, the risk of, of your ability to go out and efficiently be able to operate. Okay. So obviously this is going to be something that develops over time. We don't expect the permits, the first permits to be issued, assuming permits are issued for about a year is the estimate. I want to thank you very much, Mr. Holbrook, for joining us. And we will be touching base with both uh, opponents and advocates of, of drilling going forward. Thank you so much. You're quite welcome, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here.